Hello, hello, and welcome to another Two Network Match Report with me, Adam. It's the morning after the shite before. Merry Christmas, everyone, and it wasn't such a happy, festive feel at St James's Park when the full-time whistle went. It ended Newcastle nil, Fulham nil, in what was a very, very, very drab game with very little action. Um, basically, an an uninspiring team, Newcastle team, drew with a very uninspiring Fulham team in the end. It was a it was a war of attrition of basically how poor um, both sides could be. It was it was really really something. I mean, I think probably the worst game I've seen since the the Palace away, um, which was which was equally just grim. Uh, but I'm going to try and pick the bones out of yesterday. Um, I've had a I've had a night to sort of sleep on things and I'm, I'm not quite as angry and perplexed. I'm still a little bit confused about some things yesterday. We'll, we'll talk through those. I mean, the big thing that Rafa went, you know, Rafa, big, one of the big stories, Rafa went with five at the back at home. Um, and I, th I, just, I just think it was too conservative. I think in the end... Because we sat really, really deep, there was a lot of disconnect between the lines. So our defenders had quite a lot of possession, passing it amongst themselves, but we kind of missed somebody kind of coming really deep. I mean, I only remember one incident where Key was screaming, came deep and was screaming for it to sort of bring the ball forward. And it was when they'd sort of high pressed us, pushed us back and Dubravka it came back to him and just hoofed it when actually a cleverer ball would have just been a, a side pass through the centre and Key was kind of, he had about 20 yards of space around him completely free, but beyond that he, he wasn't, he doesn't scream for the ball like Shelby, he doesn't demand the ball like Shelby does and maybe that's a kind of personality thing, I'm not sure but we had Richie on the left we had Mankio on the right despite Yedlin's return to the squad after suspension for that red card against Wolves. Mankey obviously got the assist against um, against Huddersfield and was part of the clean sheet there. So, you know, that, that that's probably came into Rafa, Rafa Benitez's thinking and maybe he wants to try and provide a bit of competition for Yedlin who has sort of been unchallenged most of the season and has had very good games and has had a few off games as well. So, I, I can sense the decision there, but for the first ten minutes, it, it, it felt like there was some kind of uh, communication breakdown between Lascelles and, and Cher. Now, Cher had been has been a really, really big and important part of certainly our wins and, and good form on the road recently. Um, but there was a few there was a few misunderstandings yesterday, very early on between those two. And from that moment, kind of, Cher went on to have a, a, a quite poor game by his by his recent, you know, by his recent standards. You know, it's uh, every kind of long ball he played, which against Burnley, the long balls he was playing caused havoc. He was he was he was pumping them long and high, but the very precision, sort of into the pockets at the uh, uh, sort of like top corners of the of the pitch, which sort of would would mean that the defence were on the back foot having to turn and run back towards goal and having to just deal with things and answer questions. And I, I, this is it yesterday. I don't feel that we asked the worst defence in the league enough questions. And that was it. I mean, I think our strategy was to get balls into the box for Rondon. I clocked probably the first cross and Rondon header on 45 minutes on the, just the stroke of half time just before. And that's not good enough. And I think he was starved of service yesterday, Rondon. I mean, we had nine attempts yesterday. We we didn't manage a single shot on target against the league's worst team. Now, as we all know, first half, Rafa likes to feel a team out. He likes to be overly cautious, especially in these very tight six pointers. And he, and he, and he knows that, that. I think this is where it's. This is where it is. It's uh, Rafa Benitez absolutely knows he can't lose against these he can't lose these games the six pointers we just lost two on the bounce in James's Park so I can understand the logic behind not wanting to 
just up doing everything he possibly can to not lose this and being overly cautious now at the same by the same token I think by the time the second half came around Fulham were kind of spent a bit you know Schiller wasn't getting much joy Mitrovic had gone in behind a couple of times in the first half but it was only when we kind of had that five minute crumble towards the end of end of the game that Mitrovic sort of became relevant again but beyond that, they didn't seem to be offering much. And I just thought there was an opportunity in the second half. And, you know, the, the atmosphere on the ground had started to pick up a bit, which it had been really flat first half. And I think Rafford, Rafford, Rafford mentioned this, and it's something that I've been uh, banging a drum about for the last couple of, last couple of videos. And <laughs> to be honest, somebody banging a drum <laughs> might be a good way to get some atmosphere going. Because it is... I appreciate that the game yesterday was dross, but while we are nil-nil and not losing, we have every chance of winning that game still, yet there's very little encouragement coming from the terraces. And it's been the same for a, for a, for a lot of games and just silence. And it's just, we're not an intimidating place to come to anymore. We're just not. It's not, it's not, it's not a scary atmosphere. It's not, it's not, a, it's not an atmosphere where players will thrive. You see Perez putting his fingers in his ears every time he scores because he has so many haters at home. Whereas the flip side away, you've got a travelling pack of fans who scream the heart out all game and I appreciate that's always going to be the case with home and away, but bloody hell, for the, for the, for the difference in numbers, we need, to be, we need to be doing better than that. And it's like, I don't think it helps when we're playing poorly to just get on the players' backs because we're absolutely not going to improve, right, right or wrong, from the players. And I'm not defending that performance at all because it was it was piss poor, it really, really was. And I thought tactical, tactically wise, second half particularly after we'd seen what they had to offer Fulham, we could have afforded to push up. Now, getting onto those tactics, I th I think that Rafa was burned against West Ham, the three 0 where I felt against a bit of pace in Chicharito and Felipe Anderson, we were our defensive line had pushed too far high. It was it was too far high, and the, the, which was demonstrated by the second Chichir, Chicharito goal, which I believe was on the hour, where he got in behind Fernandez and he just kept driving up goal and nobody's catching him because none of our defenders, certainly in the centre defenders, are that fast. So that's that's a big issue. Um so but then to but then um against Fulham, sorry, I felt that we were too deep because I think that Rafa Benitez absolutely didn't want to let that happen and get that get mauled three nil. He couldn't afford to lose that game, Rafa Benitez. So I understand the logic. I understand the logic of using five at the back because it's a formula that has worked away from home. He's got kind of seven out of the last nine possible points away from home. So, is it a case of he just hopes that that away form translates home in, in home form as well? And does he does he feel that he's does Rafa Benitez feel that his team aren't talented enough or have the ability to retain? information and, 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 and moves and roles for two different tactics, which is why we can only play kind of one at a time. I don't know. I, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to I'm just trying to spitball into why we were so defensive and then continued to be defensive until kind of the final whistle really. We sat back, which allowed them a lot more you know space in front you know in front of our defense than they should have had. And at the end, they were probably closest to going to win it. You know, you had Dubravka having a nutmeg Mitrovic very clumsily, and I mean, it was he loses that he loses that tackle Dubravka, and it's one nil Mitrovic, uh, and, and 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 you and you've really got a riot on your hands, you know, like that, that that was that was the worst case scenario, but it very nearly happened. And then you had uh, Kamarak sort of breeze through our defence like hot knife through butter, wasn't it? it was and you know it was only. Um, in the end, when it was when it was kind of played back to Mitrovic and Lascelles threw his body in the way, suspicion of handball. Uh, Shearer was convinced it was a penalty. I'm not as convinced as that. I think there's a shout there, 
but I think if his arm isn't there, it's possibly hitting his body anyway. I, and, and he's thrown, he's thrown himself there. You can't throw yourself like a salmon. I, you need. <laughs> you, you talk about ball of hand. I'm not, I don't think it was cut and dry. Um, it certainly wasn't more cut and dry than an elbow to Jose Perez's face against Wolves. So let's, if we if we if we've got a spectrum, that that we're, we're nowhere near an incident that wasn't even like <laughs> wasn't even acknowledged by the referee. So um, you know, that's my take on it. There was a shout of a, a charge down from a Richie shot. Match of the day showed a Rondon challenge, which I, I, I from Tim Ream. I, that that wasn't a penalty for me. The charge down from Richie, the shout that wasn't shown, so I haven't seen it again. It was maybe from point blank range, and he hit it very, very hard. So it, that probably wasn't a penalty either. But then there was the Kennedy incident uh, where he, he, he came on for Atsu and did the defender tug on his arm uh, to pull him down. Now Kennedy's a player who has sort of gone down easily before, and he had a wry smile on his face. Rafa Benitez was incensed. I think there's a shout there again. It's difficult to see clear cut if there was a if there was a tug or a significant one. So, as much as I'm saying for the Lascelles one, there wasn't it wasn't clear cut enough. I've probably got to say the same for for this one as well. Um, so all in all, I think the referee got the big calls right. Um, um, but obviously there was the, the you know the camera caused a few problems and got through right at the end as well. And it was Lascelles again with a sliding challenge to sort of save our, our blushes really but you know we nearly let it slip there but there was a, there was just a point in the in the second half where the crowd had finally found their voice and things looked positive and we were parked in their half and we just needed to turn the screw a bit and really just impose and ask questions and like I say the, the, the crossing yesterday was really really poor I mean Richie Richie's corners weren't great um, I thought Key's Key had a lot better, uh, much better delivery, and a, you know, gave, gave us a lot better chance of kind of getting something from. But we were just, we were just bereft of that spark of creativity. I mean, I, I thought Muto shouldn't could have come on. We're going to lose him for for games. I mean, we've lost Key now until February, which is disastrous because Shelby's not even back on the bench yet. You know, we're looking at bringing Hayden into playing or Longstaff. If we don't invest, and we're probably not going to invest, and if we are going to invest anything, is it going to be a centre midfielder? Probably not. And if you are going to invest, is it not going to be? It's probably going to be the last three days of January. In which case, there's there's there's, there's absolutely tons of football to play then. So, Longstaff's going to have to step up. Step up. Hayden's going to have to step up. I think Hayden comes in probably, but he's just not the same kind of player as 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 Key and Shelby. We we kind of lose that long passing ability. We lose that composure. And we're going to need to ask more of our ball-playing defenders to get us up the pitch a bit more. Now, Cher had a bit of a stinker yesterday, uh, but I think he's played well otherwise. I think it's I think it's probably a bit unfair to completely vilify him now just because he's had one poor game and sort of four or five you know, decent performances. Great to see Dummett back, and I think Dummett's another one who can bring the ball out of defence. <clears throat> Excuse me, but... Richie's kind of wasted that deep. Um, we, I didn't see any of them in the first half at all. Um, Mankito did all right, but I thought there was a couple of times where Key was looking for that sprayed diagonal ball where Yedlin would have was, would have just been a bit sharper onto the end of it. And Mankito didn't quite have the first touch, I think, that, that Yedlin does as well. So I'd, I'd very much like Yedlin to come in against Liverpool. And we're going to need... I think we're going to need his pace, to be honest. I think we're we're in we're in trouble against Liverpool anyway. I think it's it's almost a write off of a, of, a, of a game just because of how well they're playing. Although they might start getting a nosebleed territory. They're four points clear at the top of the league. Um, there might be a, a bit of complacency there. Maybe a draw isn't beyond the realms of possibility. We're not going to win at, at Anfield, no chance. But a draw isn't beyond the realms of possibility. At the same time. We, we could be stuffed 3-0 quite easily as well, so we'll have to see what comes there. Um, then we've got the Watford game away, which at Watford, <laughs> they're, they're very hit and miss as we saw when they came came to our place, and you know they got a great win against 
West Ham, but they're they're the most they're one of the most inconsistent. For, it must be so frustrating for their for their fans. Must you know that they that they can't sort of string a proper run together. So that's that, that's up in the air. That's that's we'll see what happens there. Um, I just thought Fulham had a I mean, great following. I must say the fans were were, were pretty impressive and, and and full of voice. But for a, a team that's just the worst defensively, we just didn't we just didn't ask enough questions and we're going to have to sort that out and Rafa's going to have to get the, that balance right. I think the the blanket, the Rafa's blanket was misplaced. I think we were very bottom heavy yesterday and we needed to just be playing 10 yards further forward everywhere and try and get, and we were just a bit too just disjointed, you know. Atsu and Perez ran their arses off, but we just, we just didn't see enough of the ball. Rondon was isolated, as I've said, and... I thought Diarmi had a really, really good game. I thought he was probably the standout. Um, a few of the defence was shaky, and even though Lascelles has saved us a couple of times at the end, I, I'm, I'm still not convinced by his form at the minute. I think that's rubbing off on the share, to be honest. Um, we really, really need Fernandez back. He was on the bench yesterday. That bodes well for him getting a start um, at, at Anfield, and we're going to we're really, really going to need him. And and I think it's almost like Fernandez is our kind of unofficial captain. I think Lascelles is. Still not. Since he had that little bit of a sulk a few you know weeks ago, he's still not. He's still not back. I don't think uh, to the form that he is his best form. So I'd like to. We we're going to really really need Fernandez's influence and 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 ability against what's going to be a very 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 difficult, mobile and threatening attack in 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 Sane, Salah, Firmino. You know, <laughs> Shakiri. You know, there's 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 plenty to be worried about there, but you just St James's Park just was a bit of a letdown for me yesterday, and I'd, and as was the performance, as was the tactics a bit. But it's one game, and I'm going to try and pick up some pick out some 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 positives out of what was a very very drab result and very boring really and very frustrating day all around for everyone involved in Newcastle United but you know it's it's another clean sheet that's a positive we haven't lost a six pointer in fact against teams in our bottom league from 14th to 20th that's seven we've played six I believe and we, we've drawn four and won two and lost none and I think the, the losing none is is that's the crux of where Rafa Benitez is right now Fulham spent 100 million Rafa made a twenty million pound profit. He didn't want to, but that's that. That was the reality. That's a hundred and twenty million pound swing in those teams yesterday, based on the summer transfer spending. So, Rafa's in siege mode. You know, he is survive. He's literally surviving. He's doing what he can to survive with a very poor squad. We've got the third lowest wage budget in the league. Yet yeah, our defence is playing beyond its means. I think we have. One of the better defenses, and we have a, we have a top half of the table defense, and that's where Rafa is, and that's where Rafa. It's what Rafa did last year, and it's consolidation, and it's not pretty. And yes, we could have really pushed pushed on on Fulham, and we should have done, I think. But and there's a ba there's balances to be to be met there. But had we lost that game, un unthinkable. Like really unthinkable. It, it it squashes the table up with Fulham being at the bottom as well. Um, but as it stands, you know we've we're down to fifteenth, but we're still five points clear of the danger zone. Five points clear, and we're only four points from uh, Brighton Hove Albion thirteenth. So We're eight points clear. We're eight points away from the top half. The Wolves with twenty-five. We're on seventeen, so we're eight points clear of the top half, and we're five points clear of the, of the relegation zone. So, a win there, obviously, would have would have stretched that bit. Um, would have been seven points clear of the relegation zone, which from Burnley with with only twelve points, which would have been huge going into a, a run of tough fixtures, which include Man United at home next. But I think we. Despite the, the you know the, the Solskjaer resurgence of Man United, I, I, I think there's a result to be had there. Um, we historically do very well at home to Man United. Um, 
and they're still finding their feet. Yes, they've had a great win away to a very poor Cardiff side. That doesn't, you know, one swallow doesn't make a summer. That's that's one result. They're going to have to carry on that form over Christmas. They'll be quite tired by the time it comes to New Year. Maybe complacency sets in, and they're all doing daft dances on on Instagram in the in the dressing room again. So, <laughs> like that's there's there's possibly a result to be had there, but. Again, if we if we lost against Man United, we probably just have to write that off. So in terms of in terms of those positives, I think we didn't lose. We got a clean sheet. We're still we still have a healthy buffer from the relegation zone, and we just got to keep plowing on. And what we can't do is just keep getting on the players' backs, keep getting on, telling them a shite. It's just it, it's pointless, and it's not their fault that they're playing. Had we had we spent adequately over the last few transfer windows, I imagine maybe two, three tops of that of, of the, our current team would be would be starting every game. But, but but that's who we've got, and that's this is the situation we're in. And like Benitez might have misjudged it yesterday, and I, th I think he did. Why he didn't bring on more attacking options? I don't know, but. He's hamstrung. He hasn't had anything to spend. We have one of the poorest squads in the Premier League. We are surviving. He did the same thing last year, so we, we can't get annoyed at him. He's doing what he can to survive, and trusting him last year got us in the top half. It was miraculous, and he said it'll really, really be a miracle if we do it again. We won't do it again unless we can spend in January. It's not going to happen, and we need this takeover to go through. But for me, takeover-wise... The fewer noises coming out of that, the better for me. Silence is golden when it comes to takeovers. So let's just be patient on that. Haven't done an, another takeover video yet because there's just not enough inf new information <laughs> to do one. But when when things start progressing, when things maybe look like, hopefully things are, are, are kind of, you know, picking up pace, of course there'll be more takeover videos on this channel that you can enjoy. Thanks very much for watching anyone, everyone and, uh, and, and Merry Christmas and thanks very much for supporting me over 2018 as well. Uh, there'll be, obviously I'll be back for the Liverpool game but just wanted to thank all, all subscribers and other people who, you know, are maybe regular visitors to the channel who don't subscribe. That's, you know, I'm still really, really grateful to have you. And if you're listening to this on audio as well, um, hopefully um, sort of brought some... Uh, entertainment, some balance, um, and a lot of talking shite uh, to your commutes. And yeah, so very, very grateful. Everyone have a really, really class Christmas, um, and we'll see. We'll see what the next few weeks brings. It one thing's for certain: it's going to be. It's never going to be dull. Not as dull as Newcastle nil, Fulham nil. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Bye, Z, bye.